Now I see that our waiters are all across the room and they are helping us get our drinks and also helping us to get settled. So I think let's give them a round of applause just to acknowledge them. Thanks to our waiters. <laughs> Now they're going to stay around to make sure that we have all our dietary requirements ready and that our glasses are full tonight. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome to our IFAC Congress Banquet. Now you are in South Africa, you are in Cape Town, and in South Africa we normally say Goeienaand, good evening. And in Cape Town specifically we say Moloeni, so Moloeni to each and every one of you. I'm delighted to be your MC once again. My name is Elana Afrika Bredenkamp. And I look forward to an evening of awarding and rewarding. And remember, tonight was specifically built around the fact that you can fellowship, talk, mingle, and of course, exchange business cards and enjoy each other's company. Also, I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, you might hear a few creaks, groans, and moans from our beautiful structure tonight. But our structure has been signed off by both our health and safety managers and also by our engineers, and we trust engineers. So you don't have to worry about our structure for tonight. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the company. Also, just so that you know, a few housekeeping rules. Our bathrooms are on the right. On the left is the kitchen, so you wouldn't want to walk into the left. So on my right, that's where you go to the bathrooms. Just for our ladies especially, when you walk to the bathrooms, you'll see that you have to go outside. Cape Town is wet tonight, so please be careful when you are walking outside. We would want you to be safe. Uh, it is a bit rainy and wet out there, so please be careful where you are walking. Also, here in South Africa, we love entertaining and we love our entertainment. So a big thank you to Ama Ambush, our marimba band that welcomed you earlier. And then also, oh, I hear a few applauses. Why not? <laughs> and also to Manush. Manush is our gypsy jazz band. They were on stage right now. They're going to keep entertaining us. Thank you so much to everyone from Tandeka to, to Bernard, who's on guitar. You guys were amazing. And uh, we can't wait to hear from you again later on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that in the room already our waiters are around to make sure that the starters are coming your way. Later on, we're going to do those awards, but for now, please enjoy the South African wines on the table. The menu looks great, and please enjoy the starters. I made it myself. Thank you. We have seen some soft
Into wrongdoing, into wrongdoing, into wrongdoing. 
Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to take your seats. Also, a big thank you to our waiters that brought in and made sure that we had that beautiful, warm starter. And also, a warm welcome to our guests who have just arrived with some of the buses that have come in. Once again, welcome to our special evening of our Congress as we're all having fellowship and, of course, a night that we all remember to chat and to mingle amongst each other. Now, I'm going to ask that each and every one of you take a seat because it is a special moment of the evening. And this is what's going to happen. Now, I have said this before with the opening of the Congress that I'm delighted that our host is South African and that this year's conference is being held in South Africa. And I must say, from what I can gather and from what was written in the newspapers, I know that it has been an exciting and amazing week. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call on Professor Craig, Professor Ian Craig. He's going to come to the stage as our president of the International Federation of Automatic Control. And he's going to introduce our guest speaker for tonight. So, let's give Professor, our host, a warm round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, as I've mentioned, Professor Ian Craig is on stage. I'm going to ask each and every one of you to please take your seats. Thank you. So if someone is standing next to you, won't you indicate and just ask them to please take a seat. We're going to start. Thanks so much. Also, once again, thanks to our waiters in the room. You're welcome to leave the room at this stage because we're going to start with our proceedings. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask them to go sit, actually. I'm going to walk to them, all right? There's one group still standing. The waiters are leaving, which is a good sign. <laughs> Thanks again to our waiters and to everyone else. Please have a seat. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Professor Bazanez, can you have a seat, please, there at the back? Thank you. Uh, we'd, li we'd like to start the, a small part of the formal proceedings uh, of this um, event. And let me start with by saying uh, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you to this evening, the banquet of the 19th IFAC World Congress. I'm especially glad that we have with us our sponsor of this banquet, the South African Technology Innovation Agency, Mr. Chris Landsberg and also Ms. Machila. So let's give them a big round. Thank you. You might have seen on, on the IFAC manifesto that was in the delicate bag that you got when you registered. There's a vision and mission statement of IFAC there, supported by some goals and values. Now, one of the values that we have is diversity and inclusivity. And I wanted this banquet to be inclusive. So everybody who regis registered for the conference, so that's the normal delegates, and also the students who registered for the conference got a free ticket to come to the banquet. Let me sh see where the students are. Where are the students for this banquet? Any student delegate? Yep. 
So there's one condition that, you, that we have for you for being at this banquet. Is that is if you, that you keep quiet when we do the main presentation now. Right. So the students at the back, they, you, it's your job to make sure that everybody else keeps quiet. So thanks very much for that. Um, our sponsor, the Technology Innovation Agency, was given the opportunity to nominate a speaker for the evening. And they have made an excellent choice of nominating Professor Tokozani Majosi uh, to deliver the banquet address. Can I ask Professor Majosi to please come to the stage? So before Professor Majosi starts speaking, I just want to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he's a professor in the School of uh, Chemical and Metallurgical Engineering at the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Uh, is there, are there some witsies here? Thank you, Margaret. Um, his main research interest is in batch uh, chemical process integration. And some of these contributions that he's made have been adopted by industry. And prior to joining the University of the Witwatersrand, he spent 10 years at the University of Pretoria. So, very good on you there for doing that, uh, Tucker. Um, he's also, he was a so associate professor in computer science at the U University of Pannonia in Hungary for four years. He completed his PhD in process integration at the University of Manchester, Manchester Institute of Science and Technology in the UK. Are there some Manchester people here? Oh, oh excellent. Uh, he's a member of the Academy of, Eng uh, Academy of Sciences of South Africa, a fellow of the Academy of Engineering. And he has received numerous awards for his research, including the Italian Burraniak Memorial Award. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that one. Um, the South African Institute of Chemical Engineers Bill Neil May Gold Medal. And he's also the recipient of the NTSF Award and the NRF President's Award in South Africa. He's an author and co-author of 150 scientific publications and he's recently published a book on batch chemical process integration published by Springer in, in 2010. We look forward to the address of Professor Majosi. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Craig, for that introduction. Let's get this uh, sorted out. You know, it has become a tradition, actually, that every time before I start speaking, there has to be an adjustment of the microphone, and it always goes downwards. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but anyway. Uh, IFAC President, uh, distinguished guests, organizers of the conference, sponsors, colleagues, friends, uh, good evening. I have to start by saying it's indeed an honor for me to be part of this gathering. So I definitely have to thank the uh, president and Tia for nominating me to be part of this uh, uh, occasion. I, I want to be honest with you. Uh, during the introduction, it might have been very clear. I don't know if I'm audible enough. Can you all hear me? Because this is quite a big hall. You know, it's difficult to tell whether I'm audible enough or not. And I'll try to control my speech because I tend to get very excited and I speak very, very fast after that. But I'll try to control my speech because I'm in an automatic, automatic control conference. <laughs> right, but, but I, I, I want to be honest with you. When I was asked to come and speak, my first uh, response was an unequivocal no, initially. But then I, I thought about this for a while. And the reason for saying no was simply because Automatic control, which is at the heart of this conference, is really at the periphery of what I would call my area of research, uh, which I'm going to tell you about uh, in the next few minutes. But then I thought about the request for a while, went back home, and then I came back and I said to Professor Craig, fine, I'll do it. But let me explain why I did that. I work in this area of uh, integration of batch chemical processes. And I've been doing this now for a while. And the reason why I ended up there, I guess, is because of some serendipity. Because I 
worked for companies that were batch in mode. I worked for Dow AgroSciences, which was mainly batch. I worked for Unilever, also mainly batch. Even when I was working for Sasol, I was assigned to a plant that was batch. So this is how I ended up in batch process uh, integration. And to be more specific, I work in an area of multi-purpose batch plants. Uh, I, you were, the students were given a task to make sure that everyone is quiet at the back there, but uh, it doesn't look like they're doing that. Now, let me just explain briefly what the batch, these multi-purpose batch plants are. On a grand scale, batch operations are divided into two categories. You've got the multi-purpose operations and the multi-product operations. The multi-product operations are nothing different from uh, what the mechanical engineers perhaps would call your flow shop operations. And then the multi-purpose operations on the other hand are what you would call your job shop operations. And we know that the multi-purpose operations by their very nature tend to be more complex simply because they are combinatorially more intensive than the multi-product batch operations. And there's a reason why there's so much emphasis on multi-purpose batch plants. It is because multi-purpose batch plants, actually in terms of mathematics, if we could develop methods that handle multi-purpose batch plants, then definitely we'll be able to solve multi-product batch plants. This area of, uh, batch process, of, of, of batch process integration is a small branch of a broad field of process integration. And I think most of you here will be aware of the origins of process integration in the context of chemical engineering. It originated, I think, in the late 70s, and that was mainly for purposes of energy conservation, designing energy efficient operations. That later matured into pinch technology in the mid 80s, and most of the most of the contributions made around that time were from the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology. I have to say that the noise that I'm hearing at the back is really destructive. Right. So this area of batch chemical process integration, as I say, is just a small area of a broad field of process integration, which is one of the recent areas in chemical engineering, no more than 40 years old. But with all its success, pinch technology, there is a story that is never told. And the story that is never told is at the heart of my changing of mind and saying, I'm going to come and talk here. Pinch technology was meant for continuous operations at steady state. And the uh, chemical engineers here will know the truth that steady state does not exist. Although we are always trained to design plans that are at steady state, we know that steady state actually does not exist, at least not on its own. For there to be steady state, there must be a bit of control. So the reason why pinch technology has been successful is because of control. Because it is with control that you can bring any process closer to what you would call a steady state. Which means, truly speaking, there is confluence then between uh, process integration and control. And that observation is what changed my mind. And I said, okay, fine. If I say I'm working in process integration, then obviously I think the process control experts will also have an ear for me. And I decided to come and talk to you. Now that the noise has died down. But let me just qualify that uh, statement that I've just made. The, the confluence of uh, process integration and, um, and control. Batch processes are fundamentally different from continuous operations. Uh, in the sense that even with the most advanced of control systems, you will never attain what you would call steady state in batch operations. Which means then, therefore, that any technique or mathematical model developed for a continuous process cannot be readily applied to a batch uh, process. And again, there are other implications here when we deal with batch operations, other complexities in batch operations that we have to talk about, which also have a link somehow to this automatic control. And I'm going to just mention a four of these complexities 
in batch chemical plants. One of these is obviously time, because when we deal with a batch plant, we have to deal with time. By its very definition, a batch plant is defined as any plant that constitutes discrete tasks whose purpose is to convert raw materials to final, pro to final products. So there is this element of discreteness of tasks. And that means that time is distributed throughout the process and that cannot be frozen. So surely then we have to deal with time. And in this area of uh, research, the one that I'm working on, uh, we've got what is called scheduling, which is nothing else but capturing the essence of time. There are three ways of doing this, of capturing time. One of them is obviously using the time average models. In other words, treating a batch plant as if it were a pseudo-continuous plant. In other words, you just suppress this time dimension as if it does not exist. The other one is specifying time beforehand, a priori, and assuming that time in your formulation or the mathematical modeling time is fixed as a parameter instead of a variable. I have to say that, in fact, both those techniques do not yield what you would call an optimum plan, because truly speaking, time is a variable in batch chemical processes. So what we've been working on in my group uh, in this area of research is developing what is called the continuous time uh, modeling framework, where you can represent time exactly. And in so doing, you obviously would reduce the number of binary variables that are involved in modeling batch plants. Binary variables or the binary dimension is inherent in batch operations in the sense that you always have this on-off uh, situation. I have to say that when was it? About seven days ago, we were very fortunate to have a visit from two of the leading experts in this area of control and batch chemical process integration. And this was Professor Ignacio Grossman. I'm sure a lot of you will know him from Carnegie Mellon and Professor Lawrence Bigler. We hosted them at VITS last week, you know, two weeks ago. And uh, in our discussions, we dwelled on these mathematical formulations. And they've talked about this uh, scheduling problem uh, at length. We now know that the scheduling problem at the heart is, is an NP hard problem meaning that we should be obsessed with the reduction of the number of binary variables when we deal with these operations. But there's also another uh, complexity when we deal with, oper with batch operations, and that is the element of non-linearities. These non-linearities arise from mass balances, for example, and reaction kinetics. Research that has been conducted in this area has focused on the linearization of these, of, of these uh, non-linearities, We've, we know the McCormick transformations, uh, which works very well where nonlinearities arise from bilinear terms involving continuous variables. But in a situation where we are dealing with a continuous variable and a binary variable, we also have the Glover transformation, which is unrivaled as an exact linearization technique. I'm just talking about these things because I know you will understand where I'm coming from. I'm just trying to highlight the complexity of dealing with the processes that I'm dealing with. And then obviously I'll leave you with a problem that I still believe remains largely unsolved. And I think the solution of that problem lies, uh, that the, pro the, the solution of the problem is at the heart of this confluence of uh, control and mathematical modeling, even if you are dealing with a static system. So I've just spoken about time here as a complex issue in batch plants. There's also non-linearity which I've mentioned, but there are also uncertainties that characterize batch plants because they tend to be very, very intensive in terms of uh, human intervention. Most, most batch plants, for those of us who have worked with batch plants, you would know, involve a lot of human intervention. And that in its own right carries a lot of uh, uncertainties which we have to deal with. And then there's also an element of operational philosophies, which just make it more complex to deal with these operations. The operational philosophies are what you might not find out, or well, not experience whatsoever, in um, discrete part manufacturing, which I spoke about earlier. 
and those pertain to the use of the intermediate storage. In batch plants, we use a lot of intermediate storage as buffers in order to override the impact of time. And that alone makes the problem even more complex. There are about six operational philosophies that we have in batch plants. And every existing batch operation has at least two of these operational philosophies. So these are the complexities that we have. But now, how do you solve a problem of this nature? Surely, if one could have a control system that could uh, work closely with an even static scheduling framework, surely there could be a way of solving a problem of this kind. At the moment, there is no control logic that derives directly from a static operation like that because most of the formulations that we have in batch plants are based on a pseudo-static operation like your fixed a stoichiometric constraint, your fixed durations, which is not really the case when you deal with the practical system. So the problem here is how do we bring these two together in making sure that we end up with a problem that is solvable. At the moment, we do not have a, an analytical solution for a problem of that kind. There are numerical solutions, but there exist no analytical solution. So we need to do this uh, at some point find a way of working together the control system engineers and the batch chemical process engineers and see if we could come up with a, a solution. In fact, that is starting to be promising now. If you look at the work of the plant-wide control, uh, which is becoming very, very, very uh, 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 common these days, it's getting a lot of momentum in published literature, that is really coming very close to solving the problem that I've just uh, posed. But perhaps in closing, so that I don't take too much of your time, and so that I, uh, I, I allow everyone to go straight to dinner, I can see the noise maybe is about hunger. People want to go and have dinner, you know? So let me not waste too much of your time. In closing, I just want to tell you that when we design these plants, at the heart of design and synthesis of batch plants, is the issue of time. So we need to handle time effectively. We should find ways of dealing with time effectively before we can solve these problems. In fact, an average batch chemical plant at this stage is over-designed. Not too far from here, and without giving out too much information, not too far from here, there is an animal vaccine facility. And we've just demonstrated recently that that facility is actually 70% over-designed, simply because there was no mathematics involved in designing an operation of that kind. So there is room for this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, mathematical uh, techniques. I'm not sure how many people here are actually chemical engineers, but I know there are a lot of chemical engineers, there are electrical engineers, or there's one declaring himself there. <laughs> Yeah, they are mechanical engineers. Uh, the problems that chemical engineers face when it comes to control are unique problems. They are not your traditional uh, problems you'd find in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering, where you can have linear systems. We do not have linear systems. Our systems are inherently nonlinear. But I still maintain that in order for us to move forward, there must be this um, uh, integration, working together from all disciplines until we find a working solution. I, I think that should be my message for today. My message was supposed to be very crystalline. It is a message of process integration, not just in terms of the mathematics, but also in terms of working together from different disciplines. And I strongly believe that if you do that, it is then that you're gonna come up with working solutions and not just academic solutions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for those insights and also your insights on research. And you just heard it. Well, if we work together from different disciplines, we can definitely find some solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, after dinner this evening and even during, we might be starting with our IFAC Fellow Awards. And we can't wait to recognize and award as we are all here present this evening. But still coming your way, dinner will now be served. Please enjoy it. And then as I mentioned, perhaps during dinner or right after that, we'll start with our awards. We will also enjoy and need your cooperation. Bon appetit. Enjoy dinner.
I found a new babe, I found a new girl My fashion my baby has got me a worm I need to cover loving that has been merciless I swear to love the band, it's all that I crave Swear to kiss with a kiss with a bliss, can we just somehow I found a new babe, I found a new girl my passion, my baby, has got me a worm. Sabadip, 
swing revolution swing swing revolution swing
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I trust that you've loved the band as much as we have, and also that you're enjoying your dinner. Now, once again, while everyone is still being served and some of your plates still being cleared, we're going to ask you to please take your seats because it is time for our awards of the evening. So you're welcome to sit down. The waiters will still be in the room, but I'm going to ask all our guests to please take your seats. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. I'm going to ask Professor Ian Craig to come to the front because it's time for us to announce our IFAC fellows. Let's give him another round of applause. Roving mic? Can I take it out? Can I? Can you please take your seats? Ladies and gentlemen, can you please take your seats there at the back as well? Thank you. Can you put up the slides? There's nothing on the monitor. I want to see my slides. Here, here are the slides. Have these notes. Yeah, well, I will, I will have, uh, I have a second microphone as well. You can walk around. Uh, can you have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? Can I ask you to please have a, have a seat? Thank you. Um, what we are going to do now is, is hand over the 2011 to 2014 IFAC Fellow Awards. Uh, as you can see on the slide there, the first Fellow Awards were made in the Prague Congress of IFAC in 2005. And this is what award is given to persons who have made outstanding and extraordinary contributions in the fields of interest to IFAC in a role as an engineer or scientist, a technical leader or an educator. And the 2011 to 2014 committee was chaired by uh, Professor Sebastian Engel, who's with us tonight. And we had committee members Bob Bitmeet, uh, Professor Furuta, Vuk Kwan, Mike Marston, Roberto Tempo, and Fei Yu Wang. And I'm going to ask Professor Sebastian Engel to officiate the awards. Thank you, Sebastian. Yes, good evening, everybody. I think we had a great soup, a great lamb, great wine, great music, so let's have a great fellow award session. Um, 
Yeah, you have seen already the names of the committee and the first thing I would like to do is to thank the members of the committee for the smooth collaboration and for an iterative decision-making process that led to a unanimous consensus as it is frequently studied currently in distributed control. Um, secondly, let me mention one thing. These fellowships have a double function. One is that we all as scientists work for recognition and by these type of awards we give recognitions to the best among us who have contributed significantly to the field. But we also acknowledge the, our field as a whole, the contributions that the community has made. And this is why I think ceremonies like this are so important that we can see what important, important achievements have been made in the past. And thirdly, as you all know, such selections of fellows are never undisputed. So if you are unhappy about the choice or if you feel that there are many persons who would deserve the same fellowship, as a famous German soccer coach said, after the game is before the game, so the next nominations for fellows will be open in one year from now. So please think about whom you might nominate and especially I would very much appreciate if we would have more fellow nominations from people who contribute to the field also in industry and not only in academia. Okay, this having been said, I will now move on to the presentation. So this year, 32 new fellows were appointed by the IFAC Council, raising the overall number to 147. Out of these 32, 20 are present with us tonight. I don't know whether plus or including one fellow who has been appointed a long time ago and never made it to this ceremony before today. So, we will proceed in alphabetical order. I will read the citation and Ian will give out the fellowship certificates and pins. So, in alphabetical order, the first is Joseph Bokor and this And the citation reads, for important results in identification, modeling and robust control of multivariable nonlinear stochastic systems and applications in nuclear power generation, control of vehicles and transportation systems. The next is Dominique Bonvin from EPFL Lausanne in Switzerland for fundamental contributions to chemical process control, in particular in the field of batch processes. Fellowship Award goes to Tong Weng Sheng for seminal contributions to the theory and applications of computer control systems and network control. The next award goes to Carlos Emanuel de Sousa for fundamental contribution to robust control and filtering, time delay systems and Riccati equations. next fellow award goes to Bijoy Kumar Ghosh for seminal contributions to dynamic modeling and machine vision, biology and biomedical science. Congratulations. 
Okay, the next one to honor is Lino Guzella. Lino already got his award five years ago, but never made it to such a ceremony before today. Lino, could you come up to the stage? Congratulations. award goes to Zongping Jiang for fundamental contributions to nonlinear control theory and design and applications to underactuated mechanical communications and biological systems. Next, we honor Pramod Kargonikar for fundamental contributions to the theory and practice of robust and age infinity control. The next fellowship award goes to Naomi Leonard for fundamental contributions to nonlinear control and to the theory of multi agent system dynamics and cooperative sampling by mobile sensor networks. Next award goes to Richard Hume Middleton for outstanding contributions to the analysis of performance limitations and the impact of limited information in controlled systems. The next fellowship award goes to Stephen Morse for pioneering the geometric approach to linear multivariable control synthesis and for fundamental contributions to adaptive control theory and multi-agents dynamical systems theory. The fellowship award goes to Bozena Pazik Duncan for important contributions to stochastic adaptive control, inspiring vision of control as a field that spans science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and for her commitment to control education. You know I got power. Next award goes to Ian R. Peterson for fundamental contributions to the theory of robust control systems and quantum control. Xiao Zhou Quinn for important contributions to data-driven statistical process monitoring and fault diagnosis and to the unification of different methods and applications of model predictive control.
next award goes to Sigurd Skogestad for fundamental contributions to robust process control, to control structure selection and controller design. Fellowship Award goes to Mark Spong for fundamental contributions to nonlinear control of robots and teleoperation. The next fellowship award goes to Michael Verhagen for important scientific contributions in subspace identification, fault tolerant control and the application of data driven control to high resolution imaging systems and wind energy. Next, we call to the stage Yutaka Yamamoto for fundamental contributions to sample data control, signal processing, and infinite dimensional systems. Okay, next we would like to honor Jan C. Willems, who cannot be with us tonight because he deceased in the time between he was given the award and could given the award in person for numerous fundamental contributions of sy to systems and control theory. And please take a few seconds to commemorate an outstanding contributor to our field and a very kind person. And finally, the Fellowship Award goes to Yushian Sun for important contributions to industrial control and sustained exceptional leadership in the development of Chinese control and automation technologies. He, he can also not be with us for health reasons, but I think there was someone who wanted to pick up the award. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this was the IFAC Fellows Award Ceremony. Thank you very much for paying attention. And as I said before, if you see good candidates to become IFAC Fellows three years from now, because the process is now that in every triennium the Fellows are chosen, the submissions will be open about one year from now. And continue to enjoy your dinner. Thank you very much to Professor Craig and also to Professor Engel and also well done and congratulations to everyone that have received an IFAC Fellow Award tonight. Now the room is still full buzzing and everyone's still enjoying either at dinner, summer has ordered coffee and I must say exciting times lies ahead as there's more entertainment coming your way and also a beautiful dessert. Now, so far, you've had a taste of South African cuisine, lamb, beautiful wines, and we'll make sure that we end off tonight's menu with a beautiful South African dessert as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we know how sometimes exhausting conferences can be. 
So thank you so much for your cooperation tonight, and thank you for having a good time with us. Which is good news if you need to leave now. Some of the coaches will be arriving as soon as half past. So in the next 10 minutes, our first coach will be leaving to the CTICC where you were collected. Our first coach will be leaving in 10 minutes time so that you can get onto the bus and go to the CTICC. And from that moment, they will keep running throughout the night so that you can make your way back to your respective hotels. To everyone, thank you once again. This was an amazing dinner so far. Dessert will be served shortly. My name is Ilana. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. Dessert coming out shortly.